Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, Lili Nishmasi Mimi Rossi Rusmas Mordechai. Rabbi Sai, we have here, very interesting, it's a little late, but the Stanford Hill Hevra made a seum yesterday on Yuvamis. I put those arrows in. First of all, you see the sign, the MDY sign in the background. Chesidish Hevra with Haim uh, Eden over there. For some reason, they chose to put the cutout of our Yerushalmi lady from Yavamis. From all the cutouts, you hear? No, I'm not you, not you. Yerushalmi lady with the two phones in a tichel. Ah, unbelievable, I love it. The Litvaks are here. No, 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 they can't have any women at the Seum. And the, the, these guys, the only one they have. Okay, Givaldik. Rebelli, I was learning at Chalavim. I was inspired to do the daf by a roommate of mine who was doing the daf at the time. I got into your style, Lumdus. Lumdus, okay. Additionally, my family members were doing the daf too. I was hospitalized for nearly three months, bedridden. The daf and rebellion reawakened me to be a better Jew. Uh, I got away from you at Mincha, I made my day. Me and my family are originally from Silver Spring, Maryland, and are all kindled by your fire, Eitan Kovacs. Before Shlema, whatever the issue was over there. Oh, this is from the Stanford Hill Chevra. It, they, have a, they have an email, mdystanfordhill at gmail.com. So if you want to hook up with them for the seum or different things, attach. Please find the picture of Stanford Hill. Seal apologies for the delay, but we have to ensure everything had to be kosher lemahadrin. <laughs> it took a month to get the right answer. It was wonderful to hear everyone sharing their introduction to Rebelli. As Hasidim, we are all the same way Hasidim of Rebelli. As I state though. Please leave anonymous. I live in Bar Park. I started learning the daf somewhere in the middle of Seder Moed by Yuma. And then about Purim time when I was on vacation in Long Branch, New Jersey, I entered a dairy restaurant called Orchid Gardens Dining. The owner introduced and suggested that I join MDY. I immediately gave me, he gave me a free Gemara. That's Van de Velle. Also, he's like in the, he probably got a hundred people already. Since then, I've been in family and enjoyed the shiurim, charts, and everything around. I was also in the beautiful shir that was held in Brooklyn at the seam of Yavamis. I'd like to thank you for the wonderful shir. My daughter enjoys seeing the good morning every time I sit down to learn the daf. And she also made her own. Good morning, Rabbi Isai. I don't think he sent it to me, but okay. Osnach. Here, we have a rav from Ale Adumim. Ah, there's a bunch of guys in Camp Maminim who do the daf every single day, including Shaya. So keep staying and have fun this summer. Shkoyach. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Dear Belly, a thousand daf. Wow, I've been with you since Brachas Daf Beis. I've traveled with you along this journey every day without missing a day. I usually connect over Zoom or otherwise YouTube. My life has changed. My wife, five kids, and the spouses, as well as our eight grandchildren, are so proud of their Saba for reaching this milestone. Without your shiurim, jokes, insights, and personality, I would not be celebrating today. With tremendous akars, I'll to you. Looking forward. Well, I hope he understands. It's not a thousand daf since the beginning of Shas. It's a thousand daf from me n- not missing a, a shir. Every single day, a shir. And it started in the middle of Nida somewhere. Here. Nida, the 59 daf. So it's Nida daf Yudal. Okay. Your Talmud, you the Brown, Rav in Malay Adumim. And finally... I highly doubt you'll read this email out loud. Okay, so I have to read it out loud. I have opened the Gemara in the last 20 years. There's no video attached to me saying, Good morning, Rabbi Say while sky- skydiving. And my kids don't say it while jumping in the pool. That being said, your share has brought back my enjoyment of learning from Yeshiva days, your clear explanations, da da da, jokes. Uh-huh. Oh, this is interesting. Almost bring a FOMO feeling to missing a daf. I have to say that our Shabbos meals, by the way, FOMO. If you fear of missing out, who didn't know that? The Israeli kids? Okay, you learn, you learn. You're Panovich. Fear of missing out. At the end of the year, I did a shtickle video in one of the schools yesterday. So if you stick around, hopefully we'll get to it. Mamish at the end, end of the daf. To think that you gave up a possible MBA career to teach the daf is truly, truly inspiring. Yashir Koyach. P.S. I'm coming to Eretz Yisrael in a few weeks. What is your Benazman of Shir schedule? Yehuda Cat Lakewood. So, a few people asked, they're coming here, and usually I leave when they come in August. Bezer Hashem, right when Tisha B'Av is over, I'm giving a shear here in the base Medrash. I'm going to take a bite to eat and have a little coffee or something, and Gershon's going to join me. I doubt that anybody else will be brave enough to do it. Yosef will be here. As soon as the shear is over, 
taxi waiting outside, I'm going straight to the airport. Going to South Africa. And Be'ezer Hashem, Motzi Shabbos, the following Motzi Shabbos, I'm giving a live shear in Johannesburg, South Africa. So be ready, it's going to be a tremendous matzav. Coming back, I think Wednesday the 18th maybe? Somewhere around there. So from the 8th to 18th, 17th, I'm not going to be here. That, that is the schedule. But one shear is scheduled. Unfortunately, I had to scrape Cape Town. I was supposed to give a shear in Cape Town, give, doing a live shear, at least one live shear in Johannesburg. Shabbos, what? When is? Oh, so because it's Tisha B'Av, there's no shear. On Friday, there's going to be two shearim, hopefully. And the Matzei, it's going to be one of those. Two, two shearim on Shab- Erev Shabbos, there'll be one here. Even though they're missing the last few days of Yeshiva, Ari and Ovadia were keeping up with the Davil on transit and vacation. Here they are learning on the plane. Yeshikoyach and keeping them hooked. This is, uh, this is our friend's brother, Avi Berg. Uh, check this out. He, I have a tremendous car, he came with a giant platter of homemade smoked ribs and meat. Check that out. That's the size of what he gave me. It's unbelievable. What? This was not this week. All right, Raboy said, let me just say the, uh, what? We are going to, we're going to try to do a lot of stuff while we're there with lions. Last time I did a shear with lions and cheetahs. I have, I was holding on to the lion, Givaldi. The Paris HaKadosh for the Koilo are sponsored anonymously for all the new people that joined the shear. The Paris HaKoyal just for the day. Thanks to Baruch for the schos Oshenom ben Moish Yaakov. What is this? In Nachamol, Yeshua Eliyahu ben Tzipoira for Shidduch. Golden Dove alert. Mazel Tov to Yol Dove. Gross! And entering the bris of Avram Vino. Mazel Tov to parents, Baruch Lev and Nachamol, grandparents, and the Yor Yaakov and Jody Herber and the Yor Fishel Sarali. Gross. V'chulu v'chulu. Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov Fishel and Mishpachtoi. The Masechta is sponsored Lili Nishmas Yisus Baruch Mo Moshe Aaron Lili Nishmas Moshe Elazar Ben Nathan Shalom and for that Slach B'Chol Yinim for my children. The Masechta is sponsored by Jeff Razin Schus my son Yosef Simcha Chaim Ben Sora Chana Rufu Shleima Paris Achaydish by the Lachman Lovebook family is like New Jersey because Torah is the best Gula and Paris Achaydish number two Shragi Chayvitz R L one forty nine Atzala as a Schus for my family myself but it's the Dikim of R L Atzala Paris Achaydish number three Lili Nishmas Zechari Ben Moshe Paris Achaydish number four. Benji and Esti, Israel and family, in memory of our Zaydi Moish Menorah and three cousins, Sarah Klein, Ricky, and Racheli Menorah, on their 12th yard side, who were tra- tragically killed in a plane crash. Their Nishamish should all have an Aliyah. Pop Insanity Gourmet Popcorn, Muncie, New York, in honor of Reb Eli and the entire MDY gang. I think this is the first time I ever mentioned like a business, but since it's in honor of me, why not? Sruli Bornstein, Li'ilu Nishmas, Freda, Rezel, Bas, Avram, Yitzchok. Akiva Ziegler, Li'ilu Nishmas, my Shver, Yeshua, Mordechai, Ben Yisrael, Yitzchok, on his fourth yard site, and the covet, my, my new grandson, Rabbi Isa, here we go. Shalom Aleichem, you're back. Back from New York. Back from, yeah, New York. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, we got a bunch of guests. I have to say Shalom Aleichem to all the guests. What's your name, Tzadik? Craig Goldman. Craig Goldman from? West Orange, New Jersey. West Orange, New Jersey. What's your name, Tzadik? Okay, he's ignoring me. I'm not going to bother him. What's his name? Don't. Toby Rye. Toby Rye. Okay, no. Beard. What's your name, Shalom Aleichem? Moshe Yaakov. From? The Shalayim and Akoydesh. Who else do we have? Oh, Shalom Aleichem. You, in the back. Efrat. <coughs> your son from? West Hampton, Shalom Aleichem. Okay, who else? Anybody else? They're, they're already here for three days. He's already here for a week and a half. When are you going back to America? Two. Uh, okay, fine. Welcome. And Jonathan Stefanski's in the house. Unbelievable. Shkoyach, Shkoyach for coming. Rabbi said today is Daf Chof Ches Koyach. We are holding, unfortunately, like five lines before it becomes wide. We have to mamish move today because we, hopefully we can finish the parak. There's a lot, a lot to learn. I doubt it. Zok to Gemara. So if you take a look at the chart over here, we had a beautiful machloikis yesterday. Here we go. 
What happened to that screen? Not working today? Okay. We had two Bryce's that have a steer, they have a contradiction. One Bryce says that your own slave, your shifcha, is believed to say edus on you, on the woman, that she wasn't nitma by a guy. The other Bryce says that a shifcha is not believed. You see on top, what's going on here? Nothing? Just over there. Okay. One Bryce says the shifcha is believed, one Bryce says the shifcha isn't believed. And yesterday we had three pirushim. According to two of them, the, the blue and the green, Rav Papi and Ravashi, a shifcha has nemanos when it comes to a shvuya. When it comes to testifying about a woman who was captured, a shvuya, she's believed. Either because we're a makel or because the shifcha has to go out of her way and come to Bezdin and say uh, a eidos, a testimony. So she's believed. Why? Because the shifcha is not going to lie like that. A shifcha will remain quiet, maybe she's not going to do two wrongs, okay. But then we have the shita of Rav Papa with the, with the Aleph, not Papi, Papa. Rav Papa says that a shifcha is not believed. Aye, it says in the Braisa that a shifcha is believed. It's not talking about her shifcha. It's talking about his, the husband's shifcha. Okay. Zog the Gemara Levin Ketanoi. Perhaps it's a Machlokes Tanoi. Machlokes Amaroim that we have over here is a Machlokes Tanoi from a previous generation. Zuedus ish vi isha tinoi vi tinoi kes avi avi ima. To say that a shvuya, a woman was captured, and the goyim didn't touch her, who could testify? A ish, a isha, even a isha, even a tinoi, a little kid, a tinoi kes, a young girl. She has two wrongs, so to speak. She's a girl, and she's below bas mitzvah. Avi avi ima. Her own relatives could testify. Her brother's sister. And what does it say now? A shivcha is not believed. Oh, so now we have a shita that says that a shivcha is not believed. On the other hand, we have a bride that says, I call them on in Everybody's believed. Just besides she herself. There's only two people in the entire world that can't testify about this woman. And that's she herself and her husband. Her husband is Megia Beidus also. If she's Tame and he can't be with her, then it's so the Negea Beidus. It's the Kigufoi. Whatever you want to say the Pshat is. The bottom line is that you see that a Shifcha is believed. It doesn't say she, husband, Shifcha. It says she and her husband are not believed. So we have a Machlaikis here. It says the Gemara, there are Papi, there are Tanoi. That's Pashit. If you go to the blue and the green, they are the two that say that the Shifcha is believed in certain cases by Yishvuya. She's not believed by a Get. What was the case by the Get? Remember the case by the Get? A guy is on his deathbed. He's about to die. He writes a Get to his wife that it should be retroactive. Very good. Lema Freya. It should be Chal retroactively. So the Halacha is, it works, but you cannot be misyached with your wife anymore. And if you are misyached with her, you get his puzzle, and that's called a Avi. Get Yashan. Have to learn these Yisaitis, remember them. I'm saying you were good up until now. You're giving me this stuff. Get Yashan. Okay. So get Yashan means if you do a retroactive get, it goes to Mafreya, Miachshav, and then you are over on what Chacham said you shouldn't do. They said, don't be in the same room with your wife, and you are. That's why the Shifcha is believed in this case to say there's no Yichud. Okay. However, so that makes sense that we have a machlekes tanoim according to these two sheets, the Rav Papi and Rav Ashi. The Rav Papa, milema tanoi, but are we forced to say that according to Rav Papa, who says, he's in red, he says, there's never a case, says Rav Papa, where a shifcha is believed, her own shifcha is believed. The only time a shifcha is believed, if she doesn't own the shifcha, whose shifcha is it? It's her husband's shifcha. Are we forced to say this is Perhaps we could explain it a, a little differently. That what? Oh, remember this is of Masiach Levitumoy. If a person just shoots the breeze, says over a Maisa Shahaya, like that kid that was saying, Oh, I remember I was in Cheder and my father took me out of Cheder and put me in the mikvah and I ate Truma and everybody called me Yochan and Chala. So, based on that story, they decided he could eat Truma the Rabbanon. So, there also, if a Shifcha, she's schmoozing with her friend and she's saying, You know, 
so interesting. The guy, uh, the, 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 my, my, my master got a get from her husband. And then I'm telling you, the mom is careful. They never had yichot. So she didn't come to testify. Here's the Maisa. Rav Khanan said, he came from this place, there's a story that came through Rav Shuvan Levi. And some say it was Rav Shuvan Levi that said over the story. The story in front of Rebbe. Rabbeinu HaKadosh, the author of the Mishnah. There's a person who stopped saying, a terrible story, unbelievable. The Goyim came, they captured me and my mother. I always was concerned about my mother, that nobody should be with her. And even when I went to grab water, I was always with her. I always made sure nothing happened. I went to chop wood, Daiti Alimi. So based on that story, okay. So you see that if there's a Messiah, if it's my, so our public could say, you have a contradiction between the Mishnayis, with the Brises. Is that a contradiction? I'm telling you, I myself who say that a Shifcha is not believed, if it's her, she owns the Shifcha, it's her. It's her. We even had a Svar yesterday that a Shifcha and a Master are one. They're so close, they do everything, they're one. But over here, Messiah Levi Tumai, just like a kid just shooting the breeze, saying, Oh, of a story, we believe her. Says Daily Mishnah, the official Mishnah, sponsored by Moshe Kohen, for Atzlocha, with Limen Atoyim Pernasa. This, Rabbi Sai, is one of the most difficult Mishnahis for me to comprehend and wrap my head around. And we spoke about this yesterday. Oh, Rabbi Zachary ben Akatsav. Rabbi Zachary ben Akatsav himself was a Kohen, and a terrible, terrible thing happened to him. Hamoin this base Hamigdash, it's a shvua. I'm swearing on this base Hamigdash. The guy came and captured Yerushalayim. I'm telling you, I held my wife's hand the entire time. Never for a second was she out of my eyesight. And Memela, I know for a fact she wasn't nitma by a guy. Unreal. He knows for a fact that she's tar. She knows for a fact she's tar. Chachamim were makbid and they were machmer on him on something that he knows is not true. That's the pele. Zero. All women are tame. Once the goyim come in there. Azoy is. You are not believed. You don't have nemonas on yourself. Tana. But Lamaisa, it's his wife. He loved her. What are you going to do? Says the Gemara, He built her a house and said, live next to me. You can be with the kids. We can share custody. But they never wanted to be Mesiach. It's unbelievable. So, she made sure that she always left before her children so that she was never in the Chatzar by herself with her husband. She always made sure that her sons went in first and she went in afterwards. And they had a Shabbos suda together and they fabringed, but they were never biyichud. Baya baya. Ma'u lasis b'grusha came. So interesting, Shail. Are you allowed to build a house for your ex-wife and make sure that there's no yichud? And like this, you don't have the issues of custody and the children growing up without a parent, single parent. Not a single parent. They live in the same chatzah. Maybe there's a special thing because Shvuya, at the end of the day, there's different kulas that we said for Shvuya, like we just said. A Eidechot is believed. A Shifcha is believed. A Ktana. So I'll be making more. You can live in the same chatz with them. Perhaps there's no difference. Maybe even a Guru could live in your chatz. Toshma. It says that if somebody divorces a woman, she shouldn't get married and live in his neighborhood. Now don't get worried, there's people that live in the neighborhood. Neighborhood says Taisvas means three houses away. So that usually doesn't happen. Okay, other Rishonim argue. But a Kayan has another problem. What's the problem of a Kayan? He's not allowed to marry a Grusha. It happened in this neighborhood. There's a couple that got, mar- got divorced. He's a Kayan. And they don't know what to do with themselves. Now they want to get back. 
and they can't get back. Which, why do they want to get back? We went through this, the psychology. I heard from a Rav once. Because when people are married, people get engaged, married, they focus on the 80% good. Everybody has 20% that's not good, the flaws and everything. But when you're married, you start focusing on the 20% that's not good. When you get divorced, all of a sudden you realize, you forget about the 20%, you realize about the 80, you want to go back to the 80. Then you get married again, then you think about the 20. The kids are say yo-yo. Anyway, shite. That's one shot. There's another shot also. We're not going to go into it. Fine. Im hoyok fire caught on. If it was a small little village. So again, if you're a Kayin, you can't live in the same Mavi. What's a Mavi? Here, I have a picture from... Uh, here's a Mavi. Here's a Chatzar. Here's a Mavi. Chatzar is that the houses used to open up into the green. That's the Chatzar. So we're discussing Chatzar. And the Mavi is the street in the, in the center. This happens to be not the Mavi we're talking about. This is a Mavi Mefulosh. It's an open street on both ends. So more people are going to come in and out. So there's less chashash of Yichud. We're talking about a Mavi She'enu Mefulosh. A Mavi Sasum. Where you see the stick at the end of that street. If that pretend it's a wall. Here, let me see if I could do a laser here. Oh, here. Here, right over here there's a, a... So pretend this is closed off. That's what we're talking about. Here, I have another picture. Okay, here's a Mavoi Mefulish and a Mavish and a Mefulish. The one with the red letters that says Erevin Dav Zayin on it. That's when we had a lot of fun with these pictures. This is the Mavoi we're talking about because it has a wall at the end. So over here, even if they live in the same Mavoi, in other words, there's more Chatzeris that open up into the Mavoi. A Chatzer usually is one or two houses as you see here. Two, three, four houses. A Mavoi is a whole street. All these houses open up to one street. So if you're a Kayan, you cannot live with this, in the same Mavoi because there's a Chashash. If they're Yisraelim, so what's the big deal? So the... the, the They'll get married at then. But over here, the kind of the bigger is, there's the Isser of Machzik Rishah Sayyid. In my Kfar Katan, if it was a small little village, there's a story like that. A small village is like a neighborhood. Asr to live there. Who, when you get divorced, who has to leave the house? Toshma. She has to leave. So the Gemara is passing, she has to leave. In our days, we're going to see it's a little different. He doesn't have to leave. What if she owned part of that chatzar? Here, let's go back just a better picture. I like this better. It's clear. It, in, this, in this case, it's green. If she owns part of the green, he has to leave. What if they both owned a house in that chatzar and they both owned part of the chatzar? So the Gemara says a beautiful cheshman here. Let's think about it. When she has to leave, who owns the house? Obviously, she doesn't own it. If she owns the house, she doesn't leave her own house. So he, he owns the house. If he owns the house, it's the Chiddush. Of course. He owns the house. Why should she kick him out of his house? So what's going on here? Very simple cheshmet. <laughs> He's going to leave his own house and give her a house? <laughs> so she owns it. <laughs> of course, if she owns it, he has to go. Talking about they both own it. If they both own it, she has to leave. No, says Gemara, it's not a raya, dealing with the Agir Mega, or maybe talking about a case where he rented, they're both renting. My have a lot. At the end of the day, who has to leave? If both own the Chatzar, who leaves? Toshma, Hine Hashem, Mital Telcha, Taltolo, Gover. It says in the Pasuk that Hashem is going to punish you, he's going to, you're going to have to move around like a man. In other words, men have a much harder time moving than women. If that's the case, then let the woman, that's why, that's the svar, let the woman move, she has it easier. Now today they say, if I care, women have much harder time moving, they have the children, they have the this, they have the schools, so that's why they say, let the man move. It's harder for a man to move around. If the man borrowed money from his wife, how does she have money? She has money from before the marriage, from Nichsei Melug. Okay, so the divorced. These are halachas for divorced people. Don't go schmooze with your ex. Don't go knocking on her door. You owe me money. Please pay up. So you tell somebody else to get the money. If a husband and an ex-wife come together to the entire, we don't care about them. We, don't, we say, get out of here. It's not, it's not proper for both of you to come by yourselves like that. Rapapa Omar, Shamutim Shamtinalu. So we have three shitas here. Rapapa says, you put them in Khairim. 
Rav Huna Bereid Rav Yeshua Amar. Negudei minagdino. It doesn't you take out the word Nami. The Bach takes it out because according to the Bach will be not only do you put them in Chaim, you also give them Malkus. No, you just give them Malkus. So it's three steps. Kick them out, put them in Chaim, or you give them Malkus. Over Rav Nachman Tano. Be'evul Rabasi. It says in the Masechta called Be'evul Rabasi. When they have a good connection, so we're concerned that if they bump into each other in the hallway, they're going to be over Yisurim. But if they got divorced from the Eirusin, in those days, they were Mekadish, a woman, they gave her a ring, but it was just Kiddushin, it wasn't, it was just Eirusin, it wasn't Kiddushin. It, was, it wasn't Nisun, I mean. It was just Kiddushin, not Nisun. We don't have an issue. Says the Gemara story. There was a chassan and kala that came for the entire. So the Rava put a, a messenger, a shliach between the two of them. It says in the in the in the Masech to save Rabasi that we don't have to be concerned about a chassan and a kala, only about a husband and ex-wife, or I should say a chassan and an ex-kala. We're not concerned about Omalei. I took a look at them. I saw that they're being miramis to each other. They have certain signals that only the two of them know. They're already at that level. Then they can't be together. Rabbi didn't put a shliach between them. It's, just, it's the same exact thing, just from a different angle. Why don't you put a shliach there? That a chasen and kala... Uh, X, when they broke up, you don't need a shliach, nothing's going to happen. Since these two already have the signals, I have to put a shliach there. Says the official Mishnah, sponsored by Mishkon, for Hatzlocha, for Limanat Torah, and Barnoso. This is a f- unbelievable halacha. Think about it for a second. You are permitted. In only certain cases, not at the whole Torah. In these cases of the Rabbanans, we trust you that you saw something when you're five, six years old, and you're gonna come now when you're 40 years old and say what you saw. Unbelievable. I remember when I was a little kid, I told my father, I said, my Rebbe is so big and strong. His mom is like up to the Shemaim, he's huge. I saw that Rebbe like 20 years later. I almost stepped on the guy. The guy's like this tall. But when I was a kid, I thought like, wow, he's like, unbelievable. So, but we're going to trust the kid that this is what he saw. Um, it's a tremendous chiddush. Huh? He's not a katan now. No, before. Oh. He was four or five years old when he saw a specific thing. And years later, he's coming to Bezin. He's going to testify. I was at a chasana. Happens, no? You don't remember a chasana when you were a kid? When he was a katan, X, Y, Z. When I was a katan, my Rebbe is nine feet tall. You're going to believe me? <laughs> Who knows what a kid understands and sees? <laughs> a person is believed to say, I remember when I was a kid, that was my father's signature. That kid is saying, not me. That kid. The father is no longer around. But I know his signature. When I was 10 years old, I remember him signing a check. That's exactly what it looked like. We believe him. Why? Because testifying on a signature is only the Rabbanon. So we believe that. Now, Zek Savyal Rabbi, my Rabbi, I remember his signature. Zek Savyal Shalachi, I remember my brother. The Gemara is going to go into all three cases. What's the Chiddush in each one? Zoha Yisi be plainness, Shiyatzi be Numa. I remember when I was six years old, I was at my cousin's chasana, and I remember that she walked, she went down to the Chuppah be Numa. Veroisha Perua, remember we said that in those days, the girls used to do something with their hair, but when they got married, they would let their hair down just for the chasana. Another shot is I have the, the thing, I'll remind you. Here, there's a thing from, made from Adasim that they put on their head. Says the Gemara, I remember, he says like this, it's very interesting. There's a Gemara in Shabbos, and in different places in Shabbos, the Gemara says that the kids in those days used to like learn all day, they'd come home after Shkia. So imagine if you're in, in class, and there's a kid that always gets to leave early. You're jealous like crazy. And that jealousy reminds this kid. He comes to Bezda 20 years later and says, I remember that kid. That Mechotzef. We had to sit there with the Rebbe until the sun went down. That kid used to leave every day at 3 o'clock so he could go to the mikvah so he could eat truma at night. 
because of a hair of Shemesh. You need a hair of Shemesh. <laughs> Why else would he remember it? Yeah. Yeah, he had to be tar. And we said the other day that they used to play with shrotzim in the, in the garbage. What's garen? Okay, you know what? We're going to go to all this. We go through all these things. Beis Hashem in the Gemara. The garen is a granary. This, there was a grave here that bones, we're going to see about it in a second in the Gemara. There's a hidden grave and they plowed over with a, with a plow. So perhaps there's a small little bone somewhere. And he's testifying to the size of it. It's small. That kind of, you know, this is the tchum. By the way, if you, if you, do, if you already did a mesecht or two, three, you know all these things. They're familiar. You're going to see the picture. You say, oh yeah. The muscle, when it comes to Beis Pras, there's a halacha that you minapeach, you blow. What picture am I going to show? That's <laughs> also in Allah that through the you go to the funeral, you go to Levaya, seven times you stop on the way, you start saying different stuff. So I'm going to testify that this front yard is a place where the Levaya stops. It's not even yours. We have the right. You, today you're saying, don't, don't, don't stand here. It's, it's not public property. It's my own. No. I remember when I was six years old, I was at a Levaya, and we stopped right over here in front of your house, and we said uh, to him. I just believe. Huh? Oh, right. Why is he not believed? Because now he's taking money out of somebody. That's, that is not believed. Under Rabban, he's believed. He cannot testify that this is a path. I used to go to Cheder over here. That, that is not believed because he's taking away real estate from somebody. Easement. All these things that we said in the Mishnah, almost all these things, a lot of these things that require to aid him. One of the aid him must, we said he could be a katan. Huh, provided that he goes to the Gadol. So two, yes, two. One of them is a katan. Now it makes a little bit more sense. A gadol together with a cotton. What are you saying? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, he was a cotton. Today, you're right. T- sorry. Today, he's a gadol. Two gadolim. But one of them is testifying on something he saw when he was a cotton. Thank you. Vujish gadol imay. Utsricha. So what, what's going on here? Why, why are we talking? And by the way, there are cases in the Mishnah, like Truma, like Tchum, like Beis Pras, that you don't bring two gadolim. One gadol is enough. Okay. Why do we need three types of signatures? A father, a rebbe, I got the idea. A cotton is believed. No. Your father, you saw a signature many, many times in your house. But his rebbe not. He's fearful of his rebbe. So what's the real pshat? Fearful of a rebbe. So you're fearful of a rebbe, that's why you remember a signature? So the real pshat is that because you love your rebbe, you admire your rebbe, He's like a gadol to you. So you, you, you recognize his signature. You, you, you look at everything he does, and one of the things he does is a signature. I remember his signature. The fake pshat is that because you're so fearful of your Rebbe, so you learned how to forge a signature when he sent like a, a nachas note home. Or something. But his father doesn't have, you don't, you're not in admiration of your father like that. And if you said the Rebbe and a father of the Shrika Bey, the Rabbi this Layim say, it's only the father and the Rebbe. A brother has zero. Now let me ask you something. The whole idea of being Mekayim Ashtar is the Rabbanon. Why? Because Edim Achasum Ashtar, Nasikimi, Shenech Gerei Dusim Bebezdin. So I don't need you to testify that this is plenty signature. It's Eidu Achazum Bishtar. They themselves do. So it's the Rabbanan say that you need to verify the signature, authenticate the signature. So may the Rabbanan also say, hey, Mamur, hey, Mamur. They also said this guy is Neman. But let me ask you a question. Is there any plus of being somebody's brother? I'm testifying on my brother's signature. I know him. I'm scared of him. I recognize his signature. The Gemara says, no, you don't recognize him more. That's a father. You're not scared of him. That's a Rebbe. So what is a brother? Based on that, the Ritva says, 
in a chanami. There is no difference between a brother and anybody else in the world. A cotton, based on this Gemara, could testify in anybody's signature if he says he remembers it based on this. Zog the Gemara. You're done, finished. Go back to your Machlechazin. <laughs> you get one kasha a month in this year. What? Yeah, okay. What are you saying? Don't help me. Only qualify Machlechazin. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now you're going to get all of that. My timer. Why is, you hear Hill? Why is a woman, why is he believed, this cotton believed that this woman, she had her hair down like a psula, and therefore what? The ksuba is 200. Ah, it's money. We just said a second ago, you can't take away somebody's easement. You can't take away some. All of a sudden now you believe him. Says the Gemara, the Rev. Nashim Psulo is Nisois, Gilum is Bamu. So the Gemara says a beautiful thing here. Most women are psulois. Mimele, we're not even taking his, his, uh, his testimony into account. And he's just saying, he's just giving me alma. He's just revealing something. Okay. I testify that I saw my friend leaving Cheder every whatever to go be toivel. How do you know that this kid is Jewish? Maybe he's a slave that works for a Kayan. And he also has to go to the mikvah before he eats shroom. He's chayiv and mitzvahs like a woman. And this we had Taisus the other day. Taisus brings this gemara basically that a slave cannot learn Torah. And Memel, if he's coming out of cheder, obviously he's Jewish. If a master borrows money from a slave, that's a big ray that what? He's not a slave. Why would a slave have money even? Oisha so Rabbi Apetropus, he made him in charge of all his real estate. Now, which master makes a slave in charge of everything? Zariah, that he's free. Oishiniach, okay, that kind of thing. Oishiniach tefillin b'fnei Rabbi. He put on tefillin. I love that story. It's a gewaldik achav from Borough Park, where a guy was trying to sell off tefillin to a Jew, and the Jew said, "Okay, let me see, let me see what you have, let me see the merch," and he gives him the tefillin and he puts it on. He says, "And where's the other hand?" It's okay, I need, a, I need a better price. It's missing half. Okay. He got an aliyah in shul. It's a big design for ever to get an aliyah in shul. That doesn't allow him to be free. That's not a good enough raya. But I call Pana, what do you see? He, re- he read from the Torah. He knows how to read Torah. He learns Torah. You see, Evan does learn Torah. Says Gemara in the Igri Evan Medaitoi. Over there, he's self taught. But we're talking about the banim. He spent tuition on him, sent him to Cheder. You're not supposed to send a slave to Cheder. If he wants to learn on his own, great. Says the Gemara. Oh, sponsor. Moshe Horn, sponsored in honor of Zach, the Rock, Rocklin, and Lenny Learner CPA, who started the daf with Ksubis, Bezer Shembaiter. Yankel Cohen, the official MDY MSP, and Hudi Newman in honor of Rebelli. Now, check out this chart over here. Lidbal lechol betruma. I saw this kid being toivel for truma. Says the Gemara betruma the rabbanon. This testimony is only good that he could eat truma the rabbanon. What is truma the rabbanon? We had it the other day. Anybody remember? Truma the rabbanon means truma in chutz laaretz, but it could also mean that there's only three foods in the world that are chayiv betruma the deraisa according to Moshitas, and that is. Chita, Geffen, and Zayis. But it's also all the grains. So Sawyer is also part of it. Now, Stan, once we have the chart up, I just want to ask Yishayla. Nothing to do with the sugya. What bracha comes first? That of a, don't look at the chart. That of a date or that of a grape? You have a grape and a date in front of you. Which bracha do you make? What do you eat first? Huh? Why does everybody say date? Because if you look at the pasuk, it says Eretz Chita and it says Eretz Zayis. Zeis. So it goes by the Eretz. Whatever is closest to the Eretz, the bracha is first. So the grape is third down from the Eretz. But the date is the second down from the second Eretz. And Memela, a date, comes before everything else on the list besides Chit and Saira. Okay. Here's the picture of the Goiren. Where is it there? Here's the granary. 
This is where they divvy up all the flour, all the wheat. They used to go down there and say, give me the portion of truma. If you saw, you could testify that you saw him over there as a kid. Says the Gemara, how do you know, what's the right that he's a, that he's a yid, maybe he's an eved. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I send my slave to pick up the heavy bags of, of, of grain from the granary. Remember we had the sugyo. If you are at the granary, that's a riot that you're Jewish. Because we don't give a non-Jew grain. You can marry people off based on that, the Gemara says. That what? The Sanya, we had this in Yavamas. Remember, there's a crazy case where two women gave birth. One was the master, a Jew, a Koyhenes, and one was the slave. And their babies got interchanged. Now these babies grow up, you don't know which one is the Jew, which one is the slave. So they could both go to the granary, to the Goyren together. Right? It's mamish. It's unbelievable. It's the same Lushan. Goyren and granary. You, they could both go to the granary together and take the truth. But they can't go by themselves because one of them might be an Eved. One of them is 100% an Eved. So it says, the Sanyo, Eichokim Trumel Eved Elam Kain, Rabbi Imoy. You need to bring your master with you. Divir Rabbi Yudo, Rabbi Yossi Oimer. His master, I believe, means also the other kid. He's your master. Right? The son of the master is also the master. Rabbi Yossi Oimer, no, it's not true. He could say, Either I'm a yid, give me my truma. And, and what's the worst comes to worst? Worst comes to worst, I'm the slave of a koyin. So why does he say you can do that? It makes a lot of sense what he's saying. Why? Because in Rabbi Yehuda city, they just looked at the, at the guy coming to the granary and they decided he's a koyin. So Mele can marry a Jew. They didn't care about granary, not granary. So send your slave. I'll give him, I'll give him truma. What's the problem? Says Rebbe Lazar, the son of Rebbe Yossi, I never had to testify in my life. One time, I opened up my mouth. I said, Eidus, and by mistake, a slave became a Kayan. Married a Kayanist. Terrible tragedy. I made a mistake. A boo-boo. Says Gemara, hello, Sokol Daitach. You're telling me that a mistake happened to Tana, to Rebbe Lazar? Listen to this. The famous Maizah of Rebbe Pinchas He had a donkey. The famous Maizah of Rebbe Pinchas Miyoyer. He had a donkey. And they tried to feed the donkey barley. The donkey said, no, I'm not eating. So they started beating the donkey. No, he's not eating. So they cleaned the barley. He's not eating. So he says, Shem Olo Yisarte. Maybe he didn't take Maizah. They gave Maizah and the, the donkey started eating. So if an animal of a tzaddik doesn't have something wrong happen to him. He's not going to eat food without meiser. And the Gemara says, yeah, sometimes you have to give meiser for the food. If you made the food for people, then the animal also has to have meiser. So they came out from the culture, the famous meiser, the gro, that he passed in on a piece of meat that it was treif. And then when he found out that the rov, the rov was very upset at him. He said, why are you passing this treif? I pass in this kosher. And he forced the gro to come to the meal and eat the meat with him. To show that he's the rov of the city. So they sat, they ate the rov, the grain said, okay. And then uh, the chandelier, something from the, they used to have the wax, the, 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 the chalev, it fell onto the meat and they couldn't eat it. Akush Baruch Hu didn't to tzaddikim. Oh, so the R, the R, the R case is in Shas and then you have to understand why. This is what, did somebody at Tana kill the Saita? The, the, no, the, the same story, that's it. Yeah. He's forcing him to do. Yeah, so there's dark stories. Well, you have to, we have to know in each story. There are stories. Well, it's not a, they killed by mistake. They killed uh, this by mistake. And they, uh, there's different things. He passed him wrong. And they killed somebody based on a wrong psat. Oh, so what's Beis Apras? Here's the picture. Huh? I did miss lines. Yishkoyach. Elo. Big Shulalis. Oh, Yishkoyach. Very good. I want you, Bemis, I want you to, to say stuff. And he, he gave me a good aura the other day, and I made a mistake in, in regular pshat. Stam, I could have fixed it on the spot. They wanted, they wanted to. They didn't, they didn't marry a, a, a Jew. They wanted to. Why? He saw, Rebbe Lozab Rebbe saw in a different city, the cities where they don't care, he saw a slave taking grain from the granary. So based on that, he said testimony in the city that they marry people off based on that. In the city of Azul, 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 Azul,
So base up press again is a field. You see, this is a field that's plowed through. You're going to miss the video, Jonathan. Okay, fine. I think everybody will miss it. I'm kind of late now. Um, there, there, there's rumor that there's a grave here. And the, the tractor went over this whole field and crushed up the bones of the dead. So there might be a bone the size of a piece of barley. You know what barley is? What we eat in the chomp. The tiny, tiny piece of barley. If you touch that, you become tummy. Oil, to, to, let's see if I have, here we go. Oil, if you put your hand over a dead person, you become tummy. If you put your hand over the skull of a dead person, tummy. If you put your hand over the spine of a dead person, you're tummy. If you have most of the, the, the bones in the body, Rav Minyan, Rav Binyan. But at Etzim Kisa'ira, obviously if you put your hand over it, you're walking nicely over it, you're not going to become tummy. But you might kick it. Heses, which is Maga. You might lift it up. So Mamela, that's the concern. And it's a there are abundant concern. It's a far-fetched concern. You're not like going. But this kid is saying, he's not a kid anymore, right? He's a gadol. He's saying, when I was a kid, I remember there was a problem with the grave. And it went from here to here. It wasn't a hundred amma, like the Allah tells us, over here. hundred amma in all directions. It was only, let's say, 50 by 50. He's qualifying the, the, the base of press. No, it wasn't over here. It was over there. I remember, we, we used to walk over here, no problem. My time to be suppressed, the Rabbana. Dor my view, Dorma Shmuel. It's only the Rabbana until the kid is believed, or the God that used to be a kid. Because when we're learning curse, I couldn't find a better picture of a person getting down on all four, blowing his way through the field. Literally, he, he gets on all four and he walks to the Vesa Migdash on, on four. Make sure that there's no. So we had this picture. He's not a sports star or anything. He has tzitzis, he has a yarmulke. Don't, don't be chayshish. What? You guys never saw it? No, these are new guys. He's, uh, he's only here a week. But at least everybody knows. It's, it could be it's not so proper. But it's, I remember you gave me Musiran. You remember that? I didn't take it. It's still bothered. Look at him. He's still going crazy. Okay, listen. I'll take it off the screen right now for you. Rabbi Yehuda Bar Ami Mishmei the Rabbi Yehuda Omar Beis Aprash. Cut it today, but close the screen. Huh? The screen didn't work today because. This is my mistake. Because you broke the showing us, unbelievable. Rabbi Yehuda Bar Ami Mishmei the Rabbi Yehuda Omar Beis Aprash. You need that star. And he says, Rabbi Yehuda says, no. It's it, it, listen. There's nothing to be concerned here. The plowing over the tractor. Went. My time. E F Shal Le Etsim Kisoyer Shul. You need this regel because from the fact that we're saying that we're making over here that people are going to step through it and the, it's, it, it's going to disappear, it's going to disintegrate. So you see that that's only concerned with the Rabbana because if it's a concern the Raisa, you don't say, oh, people are going to walk over it. That, that's not, that doesn't get rid of it, it's the Raisa. It's, it's, it's the Rabbana. This is the Tchum. So here's a picture of Tchum. Tchum means that everybody's allowed to walk 2,000 Amma from his house, 2,000 Amma from the end of the city. But if you take some Chala, you take a meal and you put it, 2,000 feet away from your house, now you just extended, your house became where the challah is. So now you're allowed to walk 2,000 hours from the challah. But because you did that, you can't walk in the other direction of your house. You're stuck. You see the X? You can't go that way, bechlal, not even one inch. Akopan, that's tchum. So I'm telling you where the end of the city was. I remember when I was a kid. Huh? Ah, there's a famous machlekes in Shas with this idea is the Rabban. Rabbi Kiva always says it's the Raisa. He holds that a kid is allowed to testify because it's only the Rabban. Because I'm taking an easement away from somebody, I'm taking somebody's thing away. That's also turn Rabban. He's allowed to say that his father said this family is tar. Now that's a very interesting lashon. Tar means they touched the rat. How ah, does his father know what they did and they didn't go to mikvah? We meant to say that this family is possible. Now, a kid is not believed to say this family is possible, but it's already a family that has issues and there's rumors, so the kid's going to say he's going to qualify those rumors. Should we stop here and show the video a different time? Oh, here, here it is. Here's the video. Let me just show you the video for those who are not going to be here tomorrow. Let me show you the video. It's Kishmag, we'll show it again tomorrow. Here we go. Kids, listen, I'm going to teach you about this idea. It's called Pitsotso. And Pitsotso is I'm going to bring a bunch of candy and you guys can catch the candy, okay? It goes like this. 
My side. Israeli kids. It's a whole different breed. Guys, ready? Here goes Tzatzah. This is Tzatzah. All right. Similar. It says like this. I'm supposed to bring a chavit of fruit, but we don't do fruit today. We do what? Candy. Okay. It's three hundred dollars worth of candy in the box, by the way. Space is for shimu. Ochinu ploini. Zundu barrel getzo. Noso isho sheino igenesloi. Umis yorimonu shemo yis orim zagoi bezarenu. Never ever forget this tzotza. Okay? Shloi Sorei Zaroi Bezarenu. Guys, ready? This is the main part, a boy's side. Tzotza in action. Hold on, it gets even better. <laughs> That's Tzatzo. Good part, there's a good part here. Uh, <laughs> I go in there.